Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Code Search with Profanis. In the previous video, we saw how to use environmental variables in an Angular application. This is a great way, but how about if we have an API key where we do not want to commit it to our Git repo? If we use the environment files, we can have an API key variable name and have the product key or even the UAT key. The problem with this approach is that we will eventually commit these files to our Git repo and perhaps we don't want others to use our API keys. We could utilize the environmental variables where we can even set them from the terminal. This is super useful, especially for CI systems. Of course, we do not have to set the environmental variables every time. We can rely on defaults as well. Till the end of this video, you will see how to achieve this. So, let's get started. In this video, we will follow a reverse order, meaning that I will type into the constructor a console log, and then I will type process.env, and inside the env, I will type my API key. And you might be wondering, what is the process and what is the env and why do we have to use this approach? So let's go into the terminal and I will do the following. I will type node and I will click enter. As soon as I do this, I'm entering the node.js environment. The process is a node.js global object that provides various information about the runtime of the program. We are not going to spend that much time into the process, but if I click enter, we can see that we have plenty of info here, but we will focus mainly in the process.env. So the env property returns to us the environmental variables. So what we have here, I know that this is a bit crowded, but here we have various environmental variables and most of them, you know what, I didn't set them. These have set by the operating system itself. And if I want to access an environmental variable, I can do this by process.env and then either using an array notation. For example, I want to pick, uh, let's say this one. If I type process env node path, let me delete this and click enter, we have the value. So either we use the array notation or even the dot notation node uh, here I need to have env dot node and then I have my path. I have the same value. So this is the process and this is how we use the environmental variables. So I will click control D so that I can exit the node.js environment and I will do the following. I will type here API key. Let's have it like this. API key equals A and then I will type node. This time, if I type process.env and then API key, I have my value A. And you might be wondering here, why do we need to follow this approach? Why do we even care about providing the environmental variables in this way? So let's think the following, that here this is my production environment and this is my UAT environment. I can do the following. I can have here API key equals b and then i have my node and now if i type process dot env dot api key i have different value so this is the value that i'm setting for the production and this is the value that i'm setting for the uat environment so this is a very nice way of how to use different environmental variables and we can even use them from the terminal and think that this is very useful, especially on CI systems. So let's now go back to the VS Code. And how can I use the process after all? To make this happen, let's start by installing the npm i. We have to install types node with a development flag. And then as soon as we have this, we have also, let's open the explorer, and I will go to the tsconfig app, and we have to instruct TypeScript to understand the Node.js commands. And here I will type Node. So let's close this, let's close this, and let's give this a try. 
Now, if I click NG Serve, let's see what will happen. Nice. So we have a compile successfully, but we didn't solve this yet. So let's kill the server, close the terminal, and again focus here. During the compilation, we didn't have any problem, and as we saw, we had the compile successfully, but the environmental variables are not yet there. So how can we do this? So we have to interfere in Angular's build process, which is backed by Webpack, and we have to define a Webpack plugin. And at first, we have to install another package. So let's open the terminal and we will install the Angular Builders custom webpack. So npm i, and this is it, again with a development flag. Now let's go to the Angular JSON file and we will go into my build and we have to change the builder. And instead of using the Angular dev kit, we will use the Angular builders and here we have to define the custom webpack. Custom webpack. So what is happening is that this package overrides the Angular dev kit and things will work as expected and it gives us also the option to override some more configuration and provide some more configuration. And to provide some more configuration, what we have to do? We have to provide the path. Into the options, I will type my custom webpack config, webpack config, and here I need to define my path. And let's say that my path will be under src custom webpack.config.ts. You can define whatever file you, you wish. But for now, let's focus on this one custom webpack config. Similar to the build process, we have to follow into the serve process here. And again, instead of Angular dev kit, we will use Angular builders. And then we need to have custom webpack. Nice. So let's now create our file, the custom webpack config.ts. I will go inside the src directory and I will create a new file. This is my new file, custom webpack config. Click enter. And now let's add the configuration for the webpack. And this is no more like module.exports. Sorry for this. Module exports equals. And here we have to define some plugins, which is an array. We will start by using the environment plugin. And what this is all about, if you remember, we said that we can, we can provide some API keys like we did with Node.js. Here we can have API key equals A, and then we type Node. Instead of Node, now we'll type ng-serve. So how can we use the API key? Well, we will use an environment plugin, and this is my new environment plugin. Uh, you know what? I have to install it first. So here I will be import my environment plugin from Webpack. And now I will use this one and inside the parentheses I need to define an array and here I have to provide my keys. And one of the keys will be the API key. So here I have to define which environmental variables I wish to use. And I will start by using the, just the API key. So let's give it a try. If I type API key equals A and ng serve, then I expect into the app component to see in the console to see the value A. So let's see. Now let's go to the browser to see what we have. And nice, here we can see that we have the value A which means that our configuration works just fine. And you might be wondering, do we even have to use here the process and API key in this way? Well, this is not the Angular way. So I will copy this value and I will go to my environments and into the environment I will use the API key and then I can have this value here. And my API key is whatever has been provided 
by in the environment variable or here I can have a default value. This is my default value. Let's say def a. And now I can go to the app component TS and I can have my environment dot API key. And again, if we go to the browser, we expect to have the same value here. Nice. So this is more like the Angular way. Let's close this a bit and let's go back to the custom webpack config. Here we have the API key. How about now if I want not only the API key, but I want to have some more values? For example, I want to have the variable A with the value A, and then I have my variable B with the value B. You name it. So we have one, two, three different variables. To make them accessible, we have to provide them here. So I need to be like, this is my var A, and then this is my var B. This is nice, but this requires all the time to revisit the custom web config and add here the environmental variables. Although this is nice, there is a better way. And the other option, the other way is to use another Webpack plugin and the name is .n Webpack. So let's install this. npm i .n Webpack and again I need to have my development flag. And I will replace this new environment plugin, I will replace this completely with the new plugin. And this is the .n Webpack. So here into the plugins I will have new .n. And what is this doing? So instead of defining here my API keys, API key equals A, and then a var A with a value, var B with a value, and so on and so forth, we can create another file, and this is going to be my .n file. So this plugin, the .n webpack, is picking all the variables that are defined inside the .n and make them accessible in this way, like we did it manually. So I will type here API key equals this is my key, whatever. And then I can have my, my var A with a value A, and then I can have my var B with a value B. Again, you name it. By following this way, I do not have to use the API key here. So if I type ng-serve, just ng-serve, I expect my API key to be accessible into the console log of the app component via this value from the API key. So let's give it a try. I will type ng-serve and let's go to the browser, reload, and this is it. This is my key. This is a great way of how to use environmental variables. So we have this here, where is the file, the .env, and you know what, we can add the .env file into the gitignore so that we're not exposing them to other environments or other developers. And how about now if, let's say, in my CI system, I want to use the API key or even in the local host, I want to override this one. How can I do this? So if I type API key into the terminal, providing some value, let's say one, two, three, four, five, and click enter, I want this to work either from the local environment or my CI system. To make this happen, we we'll have into the custom webpack config in the .n plugin, we we'll have to add one option, and this is the system Vars, and we will set it to true. And now, if we use the API key one two three four five here, and then ng serve, we expect to see the value one two three four five into the console. And this is it. We have the value one two three four five. So having said that, the values that we are setting in the terminal in the system has a precedence over the dot n file. Now, if I want to use the var A and var B, all I have to do is to go to my environment and provide here my var A 
and then to have my var b and so on and so forth and providing here the relevant variables and again here I have my var b and these are my defaults you can define whatever default value you wish so that was it thanks for watching please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell see you in the next video